Today, we consider one of my favorites, the Tholian Web. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission, to explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 64, The Tholian Web. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode The Tholian Web, which aired on November 15th, 1968, and occurred on Stardate 5693.4. Story Synopsis. When the Enterprise attempts to ascertain the fate of the USS Defiant, which vanished three weeks ago, the warp engines begin to lose power, and Spock reports strange sensor readings. They visually detect the Defiant, but sensors indicate it is not there. Kirk, Spock, Chekhov, and McCoy beam aboard wearing life support suits and find the entire crew dead. The captain's neck is broken and the landing party initially suspects mutiny. An inspection of the ship, however, reveals that all crew members are dead and McCoy concludes they killed each other. When McCoy tries to touch one of the dead crew members, his hand passes right through him, revealing the Defiant is starting to disintegrate. The transporter aboard the Enterprise is meanwhile behaving erratically, and only Spock, McCoy, and Chekhov are successfully being back aboard, leaving Kirk alone on the Defiant. Kirk and the ship are trapped in a parallel universe by the weakening of the surrounding fabric of space, and the computer calculates the next time of spatial interphase will occur in two hours. Meanwhile, the crew of the Enterprise begins suffering from a state of insanity caused by the weakening of the fabric of space, and Chekhov must be put under restraint. The appearance of two hostile Tholian ships disrupts the spatial interphase, which would have allowed Kirk to re-enter his own universe. Spock is able to convince the Tholians to wait until the interphase occurs, but when it does, the Enterprise is unable to beam Kirk aboard. After the time has expired, the Tholians fire and damage the Enterprise. The Enterprise is forced to fire on the Tholian commander's ship, and the Tholians respond by surrounding the Enterprise with an energy web. Spock and McCoy, believing Kirk to be dead, review a recording left behind in his cabin. Kirk has predicted that Spock will be making difficult decisions and that McCoy will be critical of them and instructs the two to work together. Spock tempering his decisions with human insight and McCoy restricting his criticism to take into account his own human fallibility. In her cabin, Uhura sees a vision of Kirk and reports to Dr. McCoy that he is still alive. McCoy believes Uhura is going mad and confines her to sickbay. Scotty then sees the same vision and rushes to the bridge where everyone, including Mr. Spock, sees it as well. The Atherogem derivative is found to act as a cure for the space, madness, and insanity. Scott is hesitant until McCoy informs him that he has prepared it using alcohol as a solvent, and of course, Scotty being Scotty, a good Scotchman, after a drink, uh, a man could hit a, be hit with phaser stun without feeling it. The Enterprise is able to hold Kirk in a transporter beam at the next interphase, then escape from the completed Tholium web by using the ship's power to disrupt the space-time continuum and throw Enterprise 2.72 parsecs distant. Kirk's oxygen is about to run out, and McCoy is ready with a hypo of Triox just as Kirk beams aboard and faints. Back on the bridge, Kirk reminisces about having a universe to himself, (coughs) but admits he likes a quiet one better. He then asks Bones and Spock if they reviewed his last orders, and Spock avoids the question and McCoy downright lies about it. So what's the fun fact for this episode? Well, co-script writer Judy Burns proposed the idea of spirits floating in space in and around the Enterprise. However, Gene Roddenberry had previously specified in the Star Trek Writer's Guide, a.k.a. the Bible, that stories of Star Trek must be based on science and cannot feature unexplained supernatural events. This led Burns to come up with the idea of the interdimensional rift which was used extensively throughout multiple Star Trek iterations going forward. There were some interesting continuity issues in 
this episode. The ultimate fate of the Defiant was revealed nearly 37 years later when the vessel is discovered in the Mirror Universe in the 21st century in the episodes of Enterprise, Inner Mirror Darkly and Inner Mirror Darkly Part 2, where the vessel is first salvaged by the Tholians after being stolen by Commander Jonathan Archer of the Terran Empire. This episode is the only time that Spock refers to McCoy at as his nickname, Bones, and even then it is to tell McCoy what Kirk would think. This is the third time that the Enterprise has encountered another Constitution-class starship with the entire crew dead. The others were the Doomsday Machine and the Omega Glory. By the end of The Ultimate Computer, a fourth Constitution-class, the Excalibur, is also lifeless. Spock sensed the demise of an entire crew of yet another Constitution-class vessel in the immunity syndrome, but that was um, manned by Vulcans. According to Mike Sussman uh, about the Enterprise episodes In a Mirror Darkly, parts one and two, were to be written as a prequel to Mirror Mirror and a sequel to the Tholian Web, two of his favorite episodes. In regards to creating a sequel, he said, quote, for me it was an irresistible idea that the U.S. Defiant from the Tholian web was still floating out there somewhere in the interface, and we never knew what happened to it. Sussman said that it was a tantalizing story idea that he had wanted to explore. So uh, lots of good stuff on this one, some great science fiction. I hope you will check out. I thought this episode was a great example of pattern recognition. So today I want to see what are the lessons in pattern recognition that can be applied to compliance programs as we have ascertained from the Tholian web. Number one, identifying anomalies and outliers. In this episode, the crew of the Enterprise notices unusual distortions in the space-time continuum, which ultimately leads them to discover the Tholian web trapping, which has trapped the USS Defiant. This highlights the importance of compliance teams to be able to recognize and investigate anomalies or outliers in data as they may be indicators of potential compliance risks or even simply issues. Two, contextual analysis and cross-referencing. The Enterprise crew gathers information from various sources, including sensor data, historical records, expert knowledge to piece together the patterns and understand the underlying cause of the space-time distortions. Compliance professionals can learn from this approach by cross-referencing multiple data sources, such as financial transactions, employee activities, and regulatory guidance to gain a more comprehensive understanding of potential compliance risks. Number three, leveraging specialized expertise. In this episode, the crew relies on the expertise of Spock and the other scientists to analyze the complex space-time phenomena and develop strategies to navigate the Tholian web. Compliance teams should similarly utilize the specialized knowledge and skills of subject matter experts, such as legal experts, industrial professionals, and data analysts to enhance their pattern recognition capabilities and the interpretation of compliance-related data. Number four adaptability and flexible response. As the situation aboard the Enterprise evolves, the crew must continuously adapt their tactics and decision-making to address the changing circumstances. Compliance programs should also foster a culture of adaptability where teams are empowered to quickly pivot and adjust their approach in response to emerging compliance risks or changes in the regulatory landscape. Number five, collaborative problem-solving. The episode demonstrates the importance of collaboration and shared decision-making among the Enterprise crew as they work together to understand and overcome the challenges posed by the Tholian web. Compliance teams can benefit from fostering a collaborative environment where diverse perspectives and expertise are leveraged to identify patterns, analyze risks, and develop compliance solutions. Number six, proactive monitoring and early warning signs. The Enterprise's crew's ability to detect the unusual space-time distortions early on allowed them to respond more effectively to the threat posed by the Tholian web. Compliance programs can learn from this by implementing robust monitoring systems and early warning mechanisms to identify the potential compliance issues or risks before they escalate into full-blown illegal actions such as FCPA violations. 
by applying these letter lessons in pattern recognition from the episode The Tholian Web, compliance professionals can enhance their ability to detect, analyze, and respond to compliance-related risks, ultimately strengthening the overall effectiveness of their compliance program. I hope you'll join me tomorrow on Trekking Through Compliance, where we take up Plato's stepchildren. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.